Joseph Zito. Now, this is a director that hasn't directed enough movies. Um, he started with slashers, worked his way into cheesy action films, and then just basically disappeared. And what I like about Joseph Zito is um, most of his films are, they have a cheese quality to them, but he has a real nasty, dark, mean streak in them. And I'll get that to more later. His first film I own of his is The Prowler, a.k.a. Uh, Rosemary's Killer. And this is actually a very good slasher film. And it, the killer isn't as memorable as Jason or or Freddy Krueger or anything. You know, he wears uh, a World War II um, army outfit and kills with a bayonet. And the plot has some issues with um, why the killer chose this specific date to go on a rampage. But um, this act, overall, is a very good slasher and um, one of the best slashers I can recommend to people. And uh, Tom Savini does some wonderful special effects in this, too. So um, if you're a fan of slashers, you, you need to pick up the Prowler. That's an excellent early 80s slasher. And because of the Prowler... Joseph Zito got the job to direct Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Of course, it wasn't the final chapter. This is the fourth entry in the final Friday the 13th series, and boy, oh boy, did he amp it up. Um, he really, he, he added some good cheese factors to the film, but also asked, um, added a really uh, dark, nasty streak with the killings. This is a really brutal entry into the series, and the the killings by Tom Savini are, are over the top brut with brutality, far more than the earlier films. And because of it, this film is actually one of the fan favorites in the series, and definitely one of mine. Um, I used to, when I was younger, I didn't like the sequel as much, because it did have that, a little more cheesy streak in it. But now, as an adult, I've really learned to like uh, the Joseph Zito style, and this is actually one of my favorites in the Friday the 13th series. Then, um, he shifted gears and started directing cheesy action films. And uh, most of them after this were actually for the Canon Corporation. And he teamed up with Canon and Chuck Norris to direct Missing in Action. Again, cheesy early 80s action films with a dark, nasty, mean streak in it. Chuck Norris in this film is far more tough and meaner than he is in other films of his. Uh, Chuck Norris in other movies, he has that likability quality, a charm to him. This one, he's just fucking almost borderline psychotic. And he's a, he's a Vietnam War vet stuck in a POW camp, uh, you know, gets released after years and years, and then heads back as a one-man army to release more POWs. I mean, uh, really entertaining for a B-grade action film, and one of the best films, canon films ever, uh, out of their... <laughs> one of the best films out of canon's canon, and then, right after that, he te he did another canon film with Chuck Norris, Invasion USA, and I find this film far more enjoyable than even Missing in Action. It is, again, over the top, uh, a far-fetched plot, um, very cheesy, but again, has that really dark, mean, nasty streak in it. And he, Chuck Norris, again, is borderline psychotic. This guy is one mean motherfucker in this movie, and... Uh, I, I prefer this Chuck Norris uh, compared to the other characters he played. And basically, this is just Braddock again. He plays Matt Hunter in this film, but it, it basically feels like Braddock for missing in action. And everything in this film is even more over the top than the first film, and more uh, uh, than missing in action, and more violent. I, I just can't, this this film just has is just uber violent. Only in only the way that Joseph Zito could bring it to you. I mean. There is an amazing shootout in a mall in this, where Chuck Norris literally drives his vehicle through a mall while guys have bombs and are machine gunning people down and just kicks the shit out of them. I, I, this is one of my biggest guilty pleasures of all time and one of my favorite action films of all time and in my top three film favorite films from Canon Films. And then he did in the later 80s another cheesy action film with a mean nasty streak, uh, Red Scorpion, starring Dolph Lundgren. Now, I w had really high hopes for this film. I loved Missing in Action and Invasion USA for what they were. 
and I was, I'm like, this is basically a Russian version of Rambo. So, with Dolph Lundgren and Joseph Zito directing, oh, this is going to be major badass, but you know what? I was actually really disappointed in this. Um, I guess it, it just lacks Canon's, um, their, their aura. Uh, Canon Productions really have an aura to their films, and if this was produced by Canon, it would have been fantastic, but as is, I just, it just lacks a lot of the elements that made Joseph Zito's Missing in Action and Inva Invasion of the USA so good. Um, it also has a lot of controversy about the funding of the film, like, I believe, uh, like a terrorist organization in Africa was known to have some funding into the film, but, uh, I don't know the exact story, but, you know, overall, uh, even Dolph Lundgren refused to do any press interviews about this film because he was so upset about, um, where some of the money came from, but, it, you know, it's... For a cheesy action film, it's watchable, but from Joseph Zito, this should have been much, much, much better. And Synapse is in the process of uh, releasing a much better DVD and Blu-ray of this film, so this version's out of print, but if you can hold off, a much better version is coming. So that is my Joseph Zito collection. A really underrated director that should have directed far more movies, and it's a shame he never did, but the two slashers he, he made are some of the best the genre has to offer and he directed two amazing b-grade action films with chuck norris so joseph zito check them out <laughs>